The £1,000 road bike market is a competitive one with loads of brands all vying for your hard earned cash. So in this video, I'm going to run through some of the best options available and which type of riders they may be best suited to. And of course, if you want to take a closer look, I've linked all of them down below. Before I get onto my picks, I wanted to briefly go over what you can expect to see when it comes to the £1,000 road bike category. In terms of frame materials, it's nearly always going to be aluminium. Some brands may offer a carbon model, but this will often be produced with a lower grade of carbon compared to more expensive bikes. And in some cases, this means the carbon frame bike may not perform as well as the aluminium equivalent. So I'd recommend taking a good look at the more durable aluminium frames at this price bracket first. Brakes will nearly always be discs. It is 2024 after all. Although for all you diehards, I do have a couple of rim brake options on my list. And depending on which model you go for, you'll either get mechanical or hydraulic, with hydraulic usually being the better option. Finishing kit will nearly always be from an in-house brand and aluminium, which is no bad thing as it could stand up to more abuse than carbon finishing kits. Wheels can be from in-house brands as well, or you may get a premium third-party brand if you're lucky, and tyres will again be a mix of in-house and third-party brands. Lastly, in terms of where you can buy all of these bikes, that will be a mix of independent bike shops, brand-specific bike shops, and online-only retailers, but I'll be running through the pros and cons of each as I go. Right, with all of that out of the way, let's get on to the bikes. First up, we have the catchily named Trek Domane AL2 Gen 4. Costing £1,050, it looks to be well suited to a rider looking to head off the beaten track. It has mounts for mudguards, racks and even a top tube bag, so I suspect you wouldn't have too much trouble taking it on a little bikepacking trip as well. It features cable actuated disc brakes, which won't be as powerful as hydraulic models, but it should be easier when it comes to home maintenance. The group set is what lets it down ever so slightly, coming with Shimano Claris, which is three tiers below Shimano 105. What that means out on the road is that you only get eight cogs on the back, which may make the jumps between gears a little bit more pronounced especially on those climbs. In terms of colours, I'd actually recommend going for the all black model as I think it'll do a much better job of hiding all of those inevitable scratches and rub marks that come along with bikepacking or off-road trips. Treks can be bought online, but they must be delivered to a Trek store first. However, you can arrange for home delivery from selected Trek stores, otherwise you'll need to go in and collect it yourself. But it is good to know that you have the support from a dedicated bike shop if anything happens to go wrong. Next up, we have Canyon's Endurace 7 RB. And if you haven't guessed by now, the RB stands for rim brakes. There's no doubt hydraulic disc brakes usually offer better braking performance, but there are still some advantages when it comes to buying a bike with rim brakes. Number one, while they may require a little more regular maintenance, rim brakes are generally considered easier to work on than discs. Number two, and this is especially true at lower price points, rim brakes will be lighter than disc brakes. And number three, if you're an experienced cyclist who already has some rim brake wheels from old bikes, it's obviously much easier to mix and match. At £1,299, it's the most expensive bike on our list, but it does come with a full Shimano 105 group set and Fulcrum Racing 900 wheels. Those wheels are also shod in Schraub 1 tyres, which is really great to see. My only slight complaint would be that Canyon says you can only fit a 25mm tyre on the front and a 28 on the rear, so wider tyres wouldn't be an option for this bike. It's also worth noting that Canyon are direct sales only, so you wouldn't be able to go into a bike shop and try one of their bikes out. However, if you are a rim brake diehard who is looking for a bike with classic lines and top component choices, then the Endure 7 is certainly worth a closer look. 
If you are an aspiring racer in the market for a £1,000 road bike, then the Cannondale CAD Optimo 2 should be pretty high on your list. It's another rim brake bike, but don't let that put you off, as the CAD Optimo 2 has geometry derived from the brand's award-winning CAD 13 road bike, meaning you can be sure its handling won't let you down in a race situation. It features a full carbon fiber fork and aluminium frame, which gets the drop seat stay treatment in an effort to add a little bit of comfort into the mix. The group set isn't quite on par with the Canyon Endurace, as you get Shimano's Tiagra with an FSA crank set. This is one level down from 105, but still well regarded by bike testers. So it's not something that I personally would be hugely worried about. However, the bike is a little bit cheaper and you can always go into a bike shop to try it out in the flesh. So as always, it swings and roundabouts. And looks, well, they shouldn't matter, but I'm actually a really big fan of this stealthy black paint job as well. Finally, it features eyelets for the mud guards and racks, so you can make a great commuter come race bike if you were that way inclined. The Alle has been in specialized lineup for a really long time now, and there's always a buzz when the latest model gets announced. The main reason is its lightweight aluminium frame and dial geometry, which should suit riders looking for a fast and nimble feel out on the road. This particular model that we're looking at has everything you need in a £1,000 road bike, including eyelets for mug guards and racks, drop seat stays for comfort, and tyre clearance up to 35mm. However, like other bikes on this list, it features a lower tier Shimano Claris group set. Now, of course, this is not a deal breaker by any means, but it does make me think the Alley is ripe for a group set upgrade a little further down the line. Moving up to something like Shimano 105 would lessen the jumps between the gears and shed some weight. So for this reason, I think it's probably one of the best bikes on this list for upgrading. If you are looking for an all-rounder from an established brand, then the Giant Contend AR4 is quite a good place to start. Costing £874 at the time of filming, it also represents great value for money. Giant tout the Contend is an all-rounder that can handle more adventurous terrain, and I think I have to agree. While the bike comes stock with already wide 32mm tyres, you can fit up to 38s in the Contend, making it a compelling option for those wanting to do a little bit of light gravel riding as well. Like the Trek and the Specialized, the Contend comes with an 8-speed Shimano Claris group set, but it is over £100 cheaper than both of those models. And don't forget, Giant are one of the largest bike brands in the world, so the frame set will no doubt be dialed and ready for any upgrades you might have planned in the future. Whether it's cool to admit it or not, the way a bike looks does matter. And while looks are of course subjective, I think the Cubitane looks great, especially when you consider that it just costs £899. Like the Giant Contend, the Cubitane features a Shimano Claris group set, but it does feature the matching Shimano crank set, unlike the Contend's non-series FSA crank set. Elsewhere, it's much of the same story as the other bikes on this list, with mechanical disc brakes, an aluminium frame with carbon forks, and of course, all-in house finishing kits. But again, the thing that sets it apart for me is the paint job, which looks far more premium than some of the other bikes on this list. Last on our list, we have the ever-favourite Triban RC520, which is available online and in store from Decathlon. At £799, it's the cheapest bike on our list, so represents decent value for money. The frame is made from aluminium, and the group set features Shimano 105 brake levers and rear neck. That does sit alongside some non-series parts, such as the crank set and cassette, but it's still impressive considering many more expensive bikes on this list feature much lower spec choices for the same group set. It also comes with 28mm tyres, but you can fit up to 36mm. There are inserts for pannier racks and mug guards, so this bike would be easily upgradable to an all-round commuter as well as touring bike. 
The geometry sits more towards the endurance end of the spectrum, so if you're thinking of racing, it may be worth looking at a different bike on our list. Obviously, being so affordable means there are going to be some compromises, and this comes in the form of TRP's hydraulic mechanical disc brakes. While reviews say their action is lighter than a fully mechanical counterpart, it would have been great if they'd been able to spec a fully hydraulic system. But at such a competitive price, it's hard to find fault, and we think this would be a great bike for endurance riders on a budget.